So I think there's a lot of data coming out at San Antonio. I think one area that's particularly interesting is how do we approach patients who progress on a CDK4-6 inhibitor with endocrine therapy? I think this is an area of huge interest because we're not really sure how to best approach these patients. And here we're gonna see data from a lot of different studies that will have, I think, significant impact on what we do. One study is the Capitello 291 trial, which is going to show us data on adding capivacertib and oral AKT inhibitor to fulvestrant um, in a patient population who's progressed on a prior aromatase inhibitor. We already know from the press release that adding capivacertib to fulvestrant did improve progression-free survival in the intent to treat population, but also in the biomarker um, driven population, so those patients who have tumors with PI3K, AKT, or P10 alterations. So this is, I think, really important data to have because it does lead to a potential option for patients after progressing on a CDK4 or 6 inhibitor. We'll also see data um, from the Emerald trial where they've now done uh, an exploratory analysis looking at how long someone was on their upfront endocrine therapy and CDK4-6 inhibitor and how that correlates with benefit to alicestrin. And what you're seeing is that the patients who had prolonged benefit to upfront endocrine therapy and CDK and had an ESR1 mutation were particularly those patients who experienced prolonged progression-free survival. And I think this is really important because when using endocrine monotherapy in someone who's progressed on a prior CDK4-6 inhibitor, we really do need to figure out who can get away with just endocrine therapy alone. We see a stark drop-off in the curves in Emerald with a lot of people progressing on first restaging, but then you see a lot of people who have very prolonged benefit who manage to get past that. And so these data suggests that maybe those patients who are getting the prolonged benefit are the people with ESR1 mutations and uh, prolonged benefit on upfront CDK4-6. And then I think we'll also see data from Serena 2, um, which looked at the AZ um, oral CERD camazestrant and compared it to fulvestrant. And again, we know from the press release that this data is also positive. Um, and while this is not a registration trial, it does go to suggest that we are gonna see a lot more from oral anti-estrogen agents because we also will see the, the Veritech data with ARV471, which you know really does show very robust clinical benefit rates, you know, around 50%. Uh, in patients who've had prior CDK4-6 and the majority had had prior fulvestrant. So I think a lot to come here and I think it's gonna leave us with a lot of questions about how to appropriately tailor therapy in someone who's progressed on a CDK4-6 inhibitor.